G'day. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about or showing you how to replace a Moto One or Moto G 5G Plus. Is a bit of a mouthful that name. So what we got here is our replacement display, and I have had this sitting on my heat pad here at 75 degrees for about the past uh, about the past 10 minutes, five minutes, which is extremely hot to the touch. And now to begin with, I'm going to open up the back. Or what we're going to do is take the back off, use it with the help of some isopropyl alcohol. Once we get in there, we're going to use isopropyl to take the battery out, disconnect the screen, and from there, we should be able to take the screen out and continue. What I'm expecting we're going to need is a fin pry tool, a very tr small triple zero Phillips head screwdriver, and potentially another little pry tool. But to begin with, I'm going to spray isopropyl on my very thin pry tool. And work my way into the back of the phone. So I'll just pick any corner. I don't know if that matters just yet. There we go. So with the aid of the heat and the isopropyl, that should soften the adhesive enough that I can get in there without causing too much drama to either the back plastic, the internals. Now, I feel like this is either hard plastic or glass. I'm not wanting to bend it too much. So I'm just working my way around the perimeter. I can feel that when it has actually unbonded it, I can push it in a the pry tool a little bit further into the phone and when it's like that I can usually move it quite easily. So I don't believe there's any buttons or any wireless charging pads unless you jam a screwdriver very far in there. So far this is starting to leave. There we go. So now I just kind of fold it like a book. So we are plastic, not glass. So it does have a little bit of flex to it. I'm assuming there's a bit of a seal around the camera glass down here. I'm gonna use my fatter pry tool to get in there. Just gonna push up against the adhesive, just enough that it should let go. Very stubborn. Now as I'm working my way around this, the adhesive is staying at some points on the back, other points it's staying on the frame. There we go. So this stuff mostly will need to be replaced. I don't know what it is with the adhesive that gets used by Motorola, but unlike Samsung's, which you can reuse, this stuff mostly turns to like almost a felt material. So next up from here, we're going to have to take this shield off the back and then we'll take the battery out. So I'm just using a triple zero Phillips head screwdriver. So far, most of those screw locations look very obvious to me, with none of them being really hidden underneath a screw, like a warranty sticker or just a black sticker of some variety. So far, all the screws I've taken out do look to be of the same length. Which means, it doesn't matter which way you put them back together. Go one, two, there may be another one hidden here. That one's all done. Now should you be able to use a pair of tweezers to lift that up? Like so. Go and we're in. We'll just push that other screw out. Don't want to lose it along the line. There we go. And we're out. 
Next up, we want to disconnect the battery, which is this one. I'm just going to use my nail, flick it up, like so. Same with this other connection, which if I compare, actually my mistake, if I compare to over here, that must go to the daughter board, and underneath here, lift this up. I'm assuming we have the screen connector. What you're going to do here before you fully remove the screen is to connect up the existing muter screen if you would like to test it out prior to fully installing it, just in case. Sadly, phone screens seem to be not quite great with their overall quality control. So I'm going to drizzle some alcohol down here or isopropyl, same with over this side. Don't get too much of it there as it can destroy displays and plastics and rubbers. So Venom's got a bit of rubber on it. It very well may destroy that. Now, now we're starting to lift. Now I'll fin to switch that to a larger pry tool. To a plastic pry tool. Now, without the alcohol on here, it's going to make, or oh, isopropyl, it's going to make it very difficult to lift this battery out. So definitely, if you can get some rubbing alcohol just to put in there, that will definitely aid in getting that out, as it does semi-dissolve the adhesive. So that's now out. Next up, I want to go like that. And that's our screen and the back of the phone prepped for the new, or at least on this side. So now we can flip it over and work on the other side. What I do from here is I usually cheat and get a large flathead screwdriver and push it through from the up outside to the front. So, like that. As you see, this brought up some of the frame, but I can just go around there. Keep that all together. I keep working my way around. So, do note there is a mesh earpiece grill up the top here. I should be able to twist this just slightly. No. Go. Do look to have a little rubber gasket around the outside camera. So we'll take that off so I don't lose it. And I won't put it on to back on the screen just yet. Next up is a bit of prep work. I need to remove all these little glass shards. Might even just take this completely off if it lets me. I will need to re-glue that. That is fine. I'm just comparing the parts. They look pretty much the same, so we're going to be fine. No real major differences there, so hopefully this is a relatively close to an original display. Going by the model number on the bottom, we're pretty close. Yeah, that I'll put aside for now. Next up is clearing out the glass where I'll use tweezers and a flathead screwdriver. Just find that flathead screwdriver. And I should just be able to work around the outer perimeter. So we'll zoom you guys in a bit here. And there is like a black, it's a, a rubbery adhesive. What you want to get, what you would like to get rid of is that black adhesive around the border. So then your glue, which I'll be using some frame adhesive. You could use double-sided tape, but overall I'm a fan of the glue more so than the tape. I'll just keep going around. That's been challenging. So I just want to make sure all glass shards are out of the frame and off the phone. You don't want them to fall into the frame or into the phone. So usually I give it a brush with a toothbrush at the end. Just to make sure no glass fragments are left over. Like you can see, one just dropped in down here. There we go, another one just fell in. And we keep going with this. No, no. 
keep going up this side. So what I'm going to do is also use some glue just to re-glue that black trim. Once I screw it well, back to the frame, back to the body, and then I'll use the same glue to glue the new screen to this trim as well. So potentially if I wasn't so gun ho pushing it out, it may have left that there in one piece, but I feel like most of the time even when you go to pull it out, it usually just tends to pull that black trim off anyway. Okay, so I should just be able to do the finger test. Just slide your finger around, see if you can feel anything. Rather than putting this new screen on, pushing it down and realizing there's a shard of glass in there. There we go. Next up from here, a brush. There we go. It's looking much better. I'm happy with that. Now from here, I'll clean up the board or the mat. So these are the glues I typically use. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna go some S7800 on the frame along here, just so it blends in a little bit more. So I should just be able to lift the trim up. And just go down. Oh, there will be cleaning up required at the end, as it will be going onto the blue frame, but I'm not too concerned about that at this second. The flow of this is pretty, pretty slow. Okay. Be better. So in theory, I just need to work. get it loosely sitting there. The, whole, the screen's gonna hold it into position anyway once I put that in. So next up is prepping the screen. Which if I zoom in or out, one of the two. Out a little bit, sorry. There you go. I can take this off. There's a bit of a dust protector. And I should be able to drop that just over here for now. He just ran off on me. Where did he go? Push the front facing camera up and it pushed it out. Aha, there he is. He went further than expected. Go. Push that from the back and the front. There we go, that's now attached. Good and good. Next up, I'm gonna use some B, where will I go? Some B7000, I would say. It is running low. Now, one thing we do need to remember. Don't forget to move this earpiece trim from the old screen to the new screen. It is glued on, oh, stuck on there pretty well. All I should really need to do is line it up and sit it where it lives, which is right there. Or well, for you playing at home, right there. Now I'll go over with some glue. Put a fair bit of air in there. Need to get a prime. Now we're going. And I'm just going
So as I'm going along there, it's kind of stopping every every little bit of the way. What's going on there is that there's little barbs underneath that rubber, that plastic, or just directly under the black, the black trim, and it's just for it to grip. So it's kind of catching as I'm sliding it around. Over here, over there, try and avoid that sensor that's there. Uh, should really be about it for there. Next up, we'll be feeding this through. I don't want to tilt this over just so I don't drop everything out. I just want to feed this through. That should be pretty straightforward to achieve. If it will let me do it. There we go. I'm just feeding that through the hole that's there. Yeah, the earpiece grill is staying there. The camera uh, rubber is staying there. Just want to wiggle it into that position. So right now we're looking all right, all around. I feel like it's slot quite in that, in the groove. But there is no wiggle room if I try and wiggle it side to side. Mesh is still there. Cameras are still there. Pull this back slightly. I see two cameras, we're looking good. So now from here, I'm gonna lay this down this way. I've already swept it for the glass shard, so there shouldn't be anything there. And from here, we'll connect up the screen. We'll fold this over and have a look. There's a black trim on here. This is adhesive on this side. Over right there. What I usually do is connect it up first and then work my way back. So if I fold this over. And now I'll zoom you guys in. I'm gonna line it up over the top, use my finger to hold it. And I'm pushing it left and right and it's not really moving. So that's how I know it's connected. Just push down after that. That should lock it into position. Next up, I wanna work this way here. Go. That's a good fold going on right there. So I tell you, I want it to kind of crease. Next up from here, there's still a bit of sticky tackiness to it on there, so we're good to put the battery back in. You may have to straighten the battery back up before you put it back in, so that's what I'm just going to do now. Just require a little bit of bending. And line that up, drop it in, connect it back up once more. Fold this back down, and now we're putting this back over the top. So we're slowly making our way there. Next up after this, we'll be putting the back cover back on, or gluing the back cover back on. You can replace the adhesive. I'm just gonna go over with some, some more B7000 frame adhesive. And let's go. So as I said, when we first took these screws out, we are, or all the screws are of the same length. There's really no need to be worried about where you're putting them. I don't believe I come across any one shorter than the other. Now right now as I'm doing this, my heat pad's still on at 75 degrees, so it is, dry, is curing the adhesive on the front. So that's, a, with just the weight of the phone, just how I pushed it down, that should be okay. Typically I'd want to leave that adhesive for, oh, usually at 20 minutes or so with pressure under it. So usually when the customers come and get it, I usually have lucky man still around the phone. And usually I'd say to them, leave it for, uh, usually till tomorrow before they take the rubber bands off. Yeah, this one down here. There we go. And we zoom back out. Next up from here, you can either choose to, I can find my back, the back cover, right here. You can either choose to fully remove all of this off there. I'm not going to quite go down that path. So you can either just be able to almost use your thumb to get it to lift off. But I'm just going to go and use some more of this. Take that off. I'm just going to go around the outer frame. There we go. Reasonably generous amount of it. Don't want to use too much though in your buttons as it does sometimes seep into the button cavity and from there it permanently has a button pressed. 
So do be cautious of where it's going. You don't want to drizzle it into any holes or anywhere it shouldn't be. So on here should make perfect contact. And what I'll do as well is just go around this section here. And around the camera module, so a bit of a figure eight then. Just to help seal it up. So from here, we should be right to put the back cover back on. Press it down. There we go, so a bit of a sandwich of glue here. As you can see as I'm pushing down here, some of it's coming out the sides. I usually can use a cloth just to wipe that up now before it dries. Or you can wait till it dries and then just go over it and it should clear away from there. So anyway, that pretty much concludes the screen replacement on the Moto G, well, Moto G 5G Plus. Hope this helps and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.